So you may remember then we talked about, we first learned about enthalpy and we talked about heats of reaction. And one of the types of heats of reactions I told you about was a heat of formation. Okay, so delta H of formation. You'll often see it with a little zero there. That just means standard states, which is one atmosphere and 25 degrees Celsius. So kind of like room, room temperature and pressure. Um, this is the amount of heat absorbed or released when one mole of any compound is formed from its elements in their most stable states. So for instance, what if I wanted to make sodium chloride? Okay, I would make it from its elements in their most stable state. Sodium's most stable, like room temperature, it's a solid. Plus, chlorine is a diatomic molecule and a gas. Okay, and I'm going to put the half there instead of going 2, 1, 2, because it's one mole of the product. So the heat of formation for sodium chloride would be the heat that's released or absorbed when this reaction takes place. Okay, what if I wanted to make, say, ethanol? Okay, which is a liquid. I would make it from its elements in their most stable state. So two carbons, which would be a solid, plus uh, three hydrogens. Remember, that's diatomic, so gas, plus, um, looks like I need some oxygen, and one half of those. Again, so if I were to do this reaction, it's the amount of energy that's absorbed or released. It's called the heat of formation. Here's an example of what a table of heats of formation might look like. Don't copy down any of this. I'm going to give you a table, but just to give you an idea, um, every compound has its own heat of formation. Okay, so that's how you, that's a symbol. It's usually in kilojoules per mole. You'll notice that there's no elements on this. Okay, because how much energy does it take to make oxygen from oxygen, right? or hydrogen from hydrogen, or copper from copper. So the heats of formation of all elements um, is zero. Okay, so this is just sort of an example of a table, but I'll give you a table. In and of themselves, heats of formation are, are not very exciting or useful, but we can use them to find the heat of formation of any reaction. So we're going to use the heats of formation to find the heat of reaction for any reaction, they're incredibly useful for this. Now, this equation looks a little daunting, but it's actually kind of simple. This just means sum of. So we take all the heats of formation of the products and add them together. And then we take all of the heats of formation of the reactants and we subtract them. Um, and that allows us to find the heat of reaction of any reaction. So let's see what an example looks like. Let's say I want to find the heat of reaction for 2SO2 plus O2 gives you 2SO3. So what I do is I say the heat of reaction okay, is going to equal whatever the heat of formation of SO2 is, but I also have to multiply by 2. So I say 2, and then I go to the table, and I look up the heat of formation for SO3, and it says that it's minus 395.7. Okay, if you want to do this with the table by the side, you can follow along. And then I subtract whatever the heat of formation of SO2 is, but I need to multiply by 2. So minus 2 times, if I look at the table, it's minus 296.8. Okay, I add all the products and subtract all the reactions, so I say minus 0. Oxygen's an element, so it doesn't matter. So I do out this math, and I get minus 197.8 kilojoules. Note that it is not kilojoules per mole, okay? Because each one of these heats of formation is kilojoules per mole, and we're multiplying by the number of moles. So we end up with a bunch of kilojoules. So that's the heat of formation, no, I'm sorry, the heat of reaction of that equation. And we found it using a table full of heats of formation. Let's say we, we know the heat of reaction, and we want to find one of the missing heats of formation, because let's say, I don't know, it's not on our table or something. So we say the heat of reaction is minus 
68.3 and this is going to equal 1 times the heat of formation of SiO2 so you'd have to look it up in a table right and you get minus 910.9 and then mine I'm sorry plus always add the product so it's 4 times the HCl and I look that up in the table and it says minus 92.3 okay minus 1 times this, which we're looking for, so minus x, minus, so add all the products, subtract all the reactants, 2, now be careful when you look in the table, water and steam have different values, so you have to check to see if there's an L or a G. For water, it's minus 285.8. So, with a little bit of careful mathematics, I will do all that out, and I will get it to be minus 640 0.2, and now since this is a heat of formation, it's kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that would be the value for the heat of formation for SiCl4. So we use heats of formation to find heats of reaction, and they're really, really useful. You'll do this quite a bit.